The Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg suing House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan for what he calls an unconstitutional attempt to undermine his investigation into former President Trump. Now, Alvin Bragg wants a federal judge to block congressional subpoenas for key witnesses at the same time. Uh, Jordan's House Committee plans to stage a major field hearing next week in Manhattan, focusing on Bragg's policies in New York's crime wave. That's right. We're going to go live to Capitol Hill, where our congressional correspondent, Kilmeny Ducart, is standing by with the latest details. Kilmeny. Katrina, Bob, good to be with you. The Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg and Congressman Jim Jordan continue to trade blows over the indictment of former President Trump. And next week, Jordan will be bringing the fight to Bragg's own backyard from Capitol Hill to the Big Apple. Now, the hearing titled... Victims of violent crime in Manhattan will feature testimony from Jose Alba, who's a New York bodega clerk who's suing the city for wrongful prosecution in a murder case, a mother of a homicide victim, and more. It's the latest round in this tit for tat between Jordan and Bragg. Late on Tuesday, Bragg filed that 50 page lawsuit asking a federal judge not just to block the enforcement of his, his congressional subpoena, but all of those issued to him, as well as his current and former employees, specifically former New York County Special Assistant District Attorney Mark Pomerantz, who'd been investigating Trump's business dealings and reportedly resigned in protest when Bragg wouldn't move forward with an indictment. Pomerantz has published a tell-all book about his efforts to prosecute the former president. Well, the lawsuit states Chairman Jordan's demands, including his subpoena to Mr. Pomerantz, seek highly sensitive and confidential local prosecutorial information that belongs to the office of the district attorney. Now, Jordan issued this response on Twitter defending congressional oversight, saying, first they indict a president for no crime, then they sue to block congressional oversight when we ask questions about the federal funds they say they use to do it. Now, a Trump-appointed judge has actually blocked a temporary restraining order on that subpoena. So the decision or the hearing, rather, about whether that subpoena will be blocked, which legal analysts say likely not, is going to be the day before uh, Pomerantz is due to provide deposition to the committee on April 20th. Now, in terms of what the committee hopes to learn from that testimony, a spokesperson tells me everything that's in his book. All right, Kimani, thank you very much. Here with the thoughts, former assistant U.S. attorney and former federal prosecutor, Jonathan Fahey. Uh, Jonathan, um, is this unusual? I mean, it seems unusual on both sides. Number one, the congressional, uh, the head of Judiciary Committee suing. We, we've talked about this before, but I'm just trying to get a feel for how unusual it is that now you have a district attorney suing somebody in Congress. I, I, is, aren't there Supreme Court cases that have, have precedents that give us guidance on what's going on? Yeah. You know, I think your your point is, I think this is a unique situation that okay. this really hasn't happened before because we've not had a former president indicted before. So this is really uncharted territory. But I think, you know, what's ultimately going to happen, I think the subpoena will not be blocked because Congress has a lot of authority to, in, to, to investigate things that, that matter to Congress and matter to the United States. And certainly the next presidential election has a, a monumental impact on everyone. And certainly their view, and I, I think it's supported by the evidence, and even on almost every network, people know, people aren't even really arguing that this is a political prosecution, and it really seems to be an abuse of power, unless there's something we don't know at this point. I do, by the way, let's say it is a, a political prosecution, which doesn't serve the judiciary well. We understand that. Is there anything unlawful about it? You know, is there anything unlawful about, you know, what the mo usually the courts are not going to look at the motivations behind prosecutions. It's, you know, they really do keep that separated. So is there something unlawful about it? Probably not. But the motivations are yeah. important because if you're if you're just prosecuting someone because you hate them, you don't like them, they have different political views, which seems to be the case here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you compare it to the fact that, you know, he Alvin Bragg claims they do this 
often, but no one's pointed out any case that's even remotely similar to this. And let's talk about uh, Alvin Bragg's uh, lawsuit, of course, against Jim Jordan. Uh, Jordan saying it's he's suing simply to prevent or to block congressional oversight. Should congressional oversight be allowed in something like this? I know you pointed out that uh, this this is kind of the first time we've seen anything like this. But what would you uh, presume there? You know, can, they have again broad authority for oversight, and they certainly have an interest in our next presidential election, how that's conducted. And if a local prosecutor is seeking to basically do a political hit job through the use of the judicial process, they should look into that. And if you read that lawsuit, I just, you know, I was just reading on my phone actually before coming in here, and it really reads like a political document, which is really remarkable. It has tweets in it and all these things that have nothing to do with the law. So again, it's just uh, another example of Alvin Bragg really politicizing the judicial system, not only with this indictment, but read this lawsuit. It's a political document. And, yeah. you know, the and, courts and, are not as, the place to advance the political right. process. As, as the indictment itself, which doesn't specify the federal crime right. that moved everything from a misdemeanor into uh, a felony, uh, an unspecified, unnamed uh, a crime. Let, let me ask you about this. We want to take a, a look for a second at Bra uh, Mr. Bragg's attorney, Theodore Boutros, Jr. In 1988, representative news groups looking for information on the Clinton grand jury testimony about the Lewinsky investigation. In 2018, counsel for CNN and Jim Acosta, when the White House removed his press credentials in 2018, uh, also, uh, counsel for Fusion GPS. If that name rings a bell, uh, they were defending its work on the steel dossier. How should we read this? When you look at that information, what do you think? Well, this person seems highly political, and the fact that he wrote a book after leaving the office seems highly inappropriate talking about pending cases within the office. But it really does support the fact this is politically motivated, because my understanding is Alvin Bragg did not want to prosecute this case, and then all of a sudden somebody's coming out with a book, and now they're indicting this case, and, and Alvin Bragg suggested that there's new information that came up. That would be quite interesting. What came up between the time he decided not to prosecute and the time he decided to change his mind and prosecute. That would be quite interesting because that would really show is this politically motivated or it would either it would further confirm that or maybe even be favorable to Alvin Bragg. But at this point, when somebody is writing a book with a political agenda, you have to at least be skeptical of what's going on in that office. Are they treating this case fairly? Donald Trump should be treated no better and no worse than any one of us. Very well said. All right, Jonathan Fahey, appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you.